So every year we, uh, we look forward to having you here and, and I think what you'll find is the scientific staff here also are very excited to have you here. You bring a lot of new energy, new thinking. You're all going to be involved in little pieces, a small piece of a much bigger project, a much bigger activity. And each one of those little pieces have to work together to uh, make these machines work, to make the discoveries, the seven Nobel Prizes. You are about to embark on what I think will be uh, one of the best career opportunities, uh, academic opportunities that you can possibly imagine at your point in your career. My name is Kara Drozfowski. I go to Binghamton University, upstate. I'm an electrical engineering major with a minor in sustainability engineering, and I am working for Dr. Alessandra Colley, and I'm doing electrical and environmental data analysis for the solar farm here on campus. So we're collecting electrical data, such as current and voltage, and we're finding the power production from that, and we're using that to find the performance ratio of the modules in the solar farm to find the efficiency loss so we can understand how much the modules are producing year to year, why it's dropping, and how we can stop it from losing efficiency and power production. And this was really hard to plot because I have a lot of, lot of, lot of data, minute by minute data for 14 months, and I had to uh, reduce it so that it could be plotted in a way that made sense to people. The best part this summer was spending time and getting to know my mentor. I've learned so much from her. We have chat over coffee all the time. She tells me about what's going on in the field, how her experiences have impacted her life and impacted the field, and I've really enjoyed getting to know her. My name is Chris Begliby. Uh, I go to Emanuel College in Boston. I'm a part of the SULI program. I'm looking at mutations within the plant Arabidopsis. I'm doing procedures such as TLC and, and PCR to, to analyze the plant on the biochemical and genetic level. TLC stands for thin layer chromatography and PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. The ultimate goal of this research through the mutations and the analysis on the biochemical and genetic level, we hope to have the plant Arabidopsis increase its oil biosynthesis and storage within the leaves and this could result in our better understanding of biodiesels and alternative fuel sources in the future. The science that I'm doing in the lab is, is very interesting and, and uh, it's very important and, uh, and I really enjoy it. Hi, my name is Jordan Eisner. I'm from Valparaiso University. Uh, I'm in the Suli program here and I am studying uh, convective clouds in the tropics this summer. Climate models do not show cumulus congestus clouds very well, so we need better research to develop those climate models. So what we're looking at here is a plot of cloud top heights in different environments, and as you can see, the cloud top heights are significantly increased in moist environments. So by studying uh, the environments of these clouds, we can better understand the radiative properties and the environments in them. I'm a meteorology and physics major, so uh, this research is directly correlated to the meteorology field and I get to see how the things that I learned in my classes are now applied to do research and real world applications. <laughs> My name is Shadda Sambasivan. Uh, I am a professor at Suffolk Community College. I teach chemistry. I'm a chemist by training. Um, and I, I'm here visiting back to Brookhaven after 10 years uh, 
as a part of DOE's visiting faculty program. I am actually working on uh, graphene, which is an allotrope of carbon. Uh, this is a special allotrope of carbon, which is, if you imagine graphite, which is in the pencils, if you just take one single sheet of it, that single sheet has an amazing property as compared to the graphite itself. So this single sheet of carbon can be utilized uh, uh, to replace silicon in future. And so what we can do is we can actually substitute and put some metals on it and create same kind of semiconductor behavior like silicon would behave. And what I work specifically on is to characterize these kind of substituted graphene compounds. I actually want to do write an NSF uh, research proposal to study these materials and synthesize. I've been using Center for Functional Nanomaterial to synthesize these materials, and I would want to take it to the next step, use the NIST beamlines, which is going to be amazing for me to characterize these materials uh, and uh, incorporate it in devices, which is being tested with my collaborator at Columbia University. Hi, my name is Millie. I go to Emory University and um, at BNL I'm in the Suli program, the summer undergraduate laboratory internship. And at this internship I'm working on new methods of harvesting crystals. Hi, my name is Marina. I go to the College of the Holy Cross and my mentor is Dr. Alexis Soares and I'm in the CERT program, the Science Undergraduate Research position, and I'm working on ejecting acoustically commemorative cells. Hi, I'm Danielle Anarik. I'm from Auburn University. I'm in the SULI program. My mentor is Alexi Soros. I'm working on the ATLAS system, uh, which is a new method for growing crystals. So this is our beamline, and we put in our sample. Uh, it was actually a plate, the ATLAS plate. And we put it right here and shot it with the x-ray and got diffraction on a new crystal. They had been working on crystallizing and diffracting this protein for a very long time and we were able to crystallize it in one day and we were also able to diffract it and get a diffraction pattern. Okay. Uh, it's a bacterial drug target and uh, with further diffraction we can find new drugs. And, and this, this summer we work together as a team. Okay, hi, I'm Soren Cheng. I'm from New York, NYU School of Engineering. I'm in the SULI program and I work, I'm working on uh, analyzing CZT crystals. This machine here is actually an IR microscopy machine. What we do is actually we take cross-section images of the crystals in layers and once we have about maybe a hundred layers, we actually pile all those layers on top of each other and we'll get a 3D image of the telluride inclusions that, that are inside the crystals. The ultimate goal of this is to be able to use the crystals in non-proliferation activities such as in nuclear weapon disarmament or uh, nuclear energy to check for any kind of leakages or any kind of safety really. Well the best part was probably the actual learning experience and probably the second best part is just meeting everyone here. Everyone here is great. <laughs>
new technology uh, in the area of nanotechnology and nanomaterials, and also to look at opportunities for postdoctoral positions for the uh, graduate students, and for the undergrads to look at possibilities of going to graduate school uh, with interactions with BNL. said hello and I said hello, there came a pause during which it would have been confusing to say hello again. So I said, how are you? Chanel Rodriguez and I am um, a student in Queensborough Community College and my major is engineering science. This summer I'm working on the synthesis and characterization of paralyzinium and imidazolium uh, ionic liquids. So ionic liquids are important because they're um, being used as alternative solvents in energy storage applications. They have many attractive properties such as high thermal stability, low, um, low flammability, um, high conductivity, but they do tend to have high viscosities. My project comes in when they have high viscosities and I am trying to design, like mix and match the cations and anions, so we could try to optimize the properties for the applications that they're wanted for. Some of these applications are biofuel cells, supercapacitors, uh, uh, nuclear, nuclear waste storage, batteries, this isn't something I will learn in a classroom, not by far. My name is Charles Bennett. I'm a Lincoln University student, um, specifically an engineering major here at Brookhaven. I'm a part of the Sustainable Energy Technology Department, working with Tom Butcher, doing performance testing on a 1977 cast iron wood stove. Specifically, we're testing for particulate matter, uh, carbon monoxide, uh, nitrogen oxide. Uh, so this is important because here in the Northeast region, a lot of, a lot of homes still use these type of uh, old stoves. And what residents don't know is the fact that uh, their stoves are giving off 100% emissions. So um, it, its pollution rate is very high compared to uh, stoves manufactured uh, nowadays. So for me, is figuring out the type of retrofit um, designs that we can do to these old stoves because a lot of uh, residents like their old stoves because it gives off so much heat. Um, so figuring out what uh, residents can do to their stoves to, um, so that they can stay happy and the environment can stay happy, the, the air quality. My name is Denisha Steele. I'm also from Lincoln University working in the Sustainable Energy Technologies Department alongside Charles Bennett. My part of the project is the identification and quantification of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are released from the emissions from the wood testing. So working together was pretty cool. Um, the fact that we have experience working together back home, um, we brought those uh, abilities uh, to Brookhaven and we just excel. My name is Yi Ren Lo. I'm in the Sully program and I just graduated from Penn State and I'm now working on visualization and simulation of carbon nanostructures. Carbon nanotubes have been used in things like uh, photovoltaics. Simulations allow us to um, try to look at the physical properties of carbon nanostructures without actually taking the time and money to like construct real ones. I will be making a poster that will be shown at the supercomputing conference. I think that's pretty good.